Hey there teachers, I'm Alicia. I'm also known as The Elementary Professor here on YouTube, my blog theelementaryprofessor.com, and my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Today I have a quick and easy fractions game using a simple deck of cards. Let me get you situated over my desk so you can see how it's played. So here we are at the table and I have just a pencil here. It's not necessary. I use it as my fraction line. Um, some students just spatially do better if they have the line there. Um, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter that much. So I just use a deck of cards. They have aces through tens. My students know that every ace is a one like in all the card games we play. Um, I've taken out the um, royalty cards, but I will get back to those in a minute. So basically this is a two player game and I tell my students that when we first start simplifying fractions, I talk to them about Simple Simon. And Simple Simon is someone who only recognizes fractions when they are in simplest form. Um, he is kind of like a computer with a glitch. He does not understand if it's not in simplest form. So you have to change every fraction to Simple Simon form. So in this game, you're either going to identify a simplified fraction in Simple Simon form, or you're going to simplify it for him. It's a two player game that's kind of played like war in that you take players cards but you don't it's not going both at one time players take turns so let's say we play you turn over two cards to make a fraction and intro after if we were just learning simplified fractions I tell them to put the smallest one on top sorry I tell them to put the smallest one on top um if you are maybe a bit past that and you have um improper fractions that you're still simplifying and stuff you could change that <clears throat> Excuse me, but for this game, I just tell them to put smallest one on top. And the job here is to either say simple Simon or simplify it. So let's just say this is my turn. I'm going to say this is not in simplest form. For simple Simon, I need to say one third. I'm going to take those cards and keep them. And then the next player goes and two ninths. Let's say this is your turn and you say simple Simon. So you keep these. And then it's my turn. Ooh, there's a one. And a five, I will say simple Simon, one fifth. Now there will be a lot of simplified fractions coming up in this game and that's okay because that helps students recognize what simplest forms are as they get into bigger and bigger fractions and more grades. It's just more like they recognize right off the bat, like one fifth is in simplest form, you know, one third is in simplest form, stuff like that. So it, it's okay that there's a lot of simplified fractions. Let's say now we have to arrange these. Oh, I keep on thinking, sorry. Arrange these, um, three sevenths. Simple Simon, you say, and I say, okay. Now here's what happens if something is wrong. Put these down as my turn, and let's say that I get it wrong, and I say that this is Simple Simon. Two tenths is Simple Simon. And you say, no, it's not, it's one fifth. So you get to keep my cards in your stash, okay? And we just keep playing that way until the cards run out. Five tenths is one half for Simple Simon. Okay, and once the cards run out, you count your cards and the players, player that has the most cards wins. Um, that, that's the part that's like war. Player with the most cards wins, okay? Now, if you are wanting to do this, not just playing around the room, but like at a station, I can't get these to do this, at a station or a center, and you wanted to keep track of what your students were doing, making sure they were staying on task, I would just have them take a simple piece of paper over with them and every time they do a play, You've got me, we've got you, and let's say I had one-fifth, and then you had two-thirds, and then I had five-tenths, which I said was one-half, and then you had seven-eighths. I can't remember what I actually pulled for cards, but you just keep record, and all they do is turn that in, and um, that just helps you know that they were on task. I don't ever grade anything like that, and I don't actually use anything like that most of the time, but sometimes a certain pair will need it. Um, a way you can differentiate is to take those um, royal cards. Once everybody gets the hang of the game and you have students that need more of a challenge, I would just write these on the board, like Jack, Queen, 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 King, and I give them a value. And I usually don't just do like 11, 12, 13. I'll usually do something that's going to help create more fractions they might encounter. Like I might do 12, 15, 20. So I would write Jack equals 12, Queen equals 15, King equals 20, right on the whiteboard. And then as they're playing, they have it there to refer to. Um, but I find that those kids also usually remember it pretty quickly as well anyways. 
And then if I'm putting this game in our math game drawers, um, after we do, after I introduce math games, I put them in these drawers that kids can always go to and play um, if they're finished early or it's like rainy days and recess and stuff like that. And they, they always go for those. So I would put a couple decks of these and maybe an index card with that Jack Queen King code in there um, just to help them remember if, if they wanted to do that. So there is also another way you can play is uh, for a challenge. If you wanted to do instead of the regular way with the bigger numbers, or you can include the bigger numbers, you would do it like speed where one person goes at a time and the other person times them. So let's say I'm like three tenths simple Simon and I'm trying to go as fast as I can. One whole, that's simple, that's simple Simon. Let's see, nine, three nines, gotta rearrange it. One third, you know, like that. And you would go through the whole deck with the other person timing you and then you would switch and you're trying to you're not necessarily, I mean, you could do it either way. You could have them try to win like one beats the other in time, or you could do it where um, you try to beat yourself. I always kind of like the beat yourself type games. So that's just another way to differentiate is speed because that creates the fluency. As students get older and do more stuff with fractions, the faster they can just recognize a simplest form fraction, the better it is for them. So that is what I will leave with you with today. I hope you have time to play that in your classroom. I will also leave a link below to a equivalent fractions freebie I have on my blog um, with mystery pictures if you're interested in that. I will be back soon with another fraction game and I hope to see you here.